Cloud gaming is not your enemy. Interesting taglines. Right? Historically, gaming fans are resistant to change, and sometimes for good reasons. Through its long history, the video game industry has experimented with ideas that tend to pit the best interests of players against those of corporations. Everything from invasive microtransactions to the Xbox One's failed always online plan. Cloud gaming is seemingly under more scrutiny than ever. The more companies experiment with the tech, the more it's treated as an existential threat to the industry. When Kingdom Hearts came to Nintendo Switch via cloud sports, fans dragged it through the mud. The skepticism is understandable as cloud proponents have yet to earn players' trust. Cloud gaming continues to be a tricky technology as it relies on a user having a good internet connection, something that isn't always possible in most of the U.S. However, outright opposition to the tech can feel misplaced. Unlike other recent tech innovations, cloud gaming could actually solve problems. In fact, we're already seeing just how positive it can be as an option. Players have plenty of legitimate issues with the tech, Part of the response stems from its initial implementation. When Google launched its cloud platform Stadia in 2019, there was no real roadmap for how the cloud should integrate into video games. Google packaged its service into a pricey, pricey? Okay. pricey subscription model that prioritized the tech itself over the actual games and supported it. With a small launch lineup and a lack of features at launch, Stadia immediately struggled to find its footing. For a time, cloud gaming became synonymous with subscription services. It didn't help that Amazon jumped on Google's bandwagon with Luna shortly after, reinforcing their perception. The people have the problem with like Ubisoft Plus and then Xbox Game Pass and what's the other one? PlayStation Now. I don't know if it's a main issue, but I think people are getting used to subscriptions. But the beautiful thing is that with Stadia, you don't have to subscribe. You just buy the game and that's it but stadia didn't good do, didn't do a good job explaining that because when whenever i try to get somebody to try stadia and they go to stadia.com it's changed now but um they would be forced to put in a credit card and everybody you know if you don't know what, what the service is and you know you just heard some guy tell you hey you should check it out it's, it's fun and then you're asked to put up a credit card it starts getting a little sus so i think stadia shouldn't have pushed the subscription as much uh the always online nature of cloud gaming presents a bevy of problems for gamers who don't live in major cities that has access to fast internet lagging image quality dips can put a damper on experiences like destiny 2 with no way to play games offline there's no guarantee that players will get a fully stable experience playing over wide good points other issues are more complex ownership becomes a an especially slippery concept with the cloud and that's something players have long been prickly about if someone buys a game on google stadia and google shutters the service subscribers simply won't have access to it anymore best case scenario the cloud's role in the modern gaming landscape is mostly a supplemental one it's part of a wider industry philosophy that aims to make gaming more flexible the same idea that birth birth the nintendo switch and steam deck for dedicated console and pc players it means that it's now possible to play something like halo infinite on vacation without uh, lugging a pricey machine around the aim is to give us more options not less its most obvious benefit is financial for those who don't want to spend 500 dollars buying a, a new console or much more on a capable pc cloud gaming lowers the barriers for entry by putting high-end games on the devices they already own it widens access, and that's fundamentally a net positive outcome. True, true, true. Microsoft's Fortnite move took that power away from Apple. Now, players can once again enjoy the Battle Royale on iOS devices, and there's not much the company can do about it. Given the state of the Nintendo Switch and its aging tech, the cloud gives players a way to experience modern titles like Control that simply wouldn't run on the console otherwise. Yeah, that's true, you know, some... Some of the older game uh, consoles can't handle some of the newer games. So. Yeah, it's a good way to balance it out. In all of these scenarios, the alternative would be that these games simply wouldn't exist on these platforms. Fortnite would not continue to be unplayable on iOS due to co corporate politics. PS3 games would remain lost to time, and Switch owners would have less options. 
As long as it continues to supplement traditional gaming experiences, it's a powerful tool that stands to help more than hurt. You don't have to buy it, but it's not our enemy. I'm not sure if I would have uh, came back to gaming as as hard as I, as I did. I wasn't really a big gamer, even when I was little. I had the, uh, the original Nintendo. I did have the Xbox 360. I played it a, little, a couple times and then gave it away. And then I had the Nintendo Wii. Played it a little bit and then just sold it. So I wasn't really a big gamer. And then when we got stuck in the house with the pandemic, I got tired of watching Netflix and you know, just wanted something different. So I started playing some games and my computer's so old that I couldn't play most of the games. Next thing you know, <laughs> Google Stadia pops up on my screen and then it was working. It wasn't perfect. It was a lot better than what my PC was able to do, what my phone was able to do. There's no way that cloud gaming is going to die, if that makes any sense. You know, it's like saying when Netflix started streaming that, oh, you know, streaming is going to die, DVDs are going to be king. I would have put my money on that. 